Good morning, church. Um, so this morning's service, I uh, hope you're comfortable there at home. Um, the title this morning is Sanctified Rather Than Isolated. So let's just pray for the word this morning. Papa, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Papa, for um, this opportunity that you've given all of us to be with family, to be in a place of rest, to um, be set apart for you. And uh, we thank you that wherever each person is at, that you would fill that room with your presence, that your spirit will come and just fill that place, your spirit to come and minister truth to us, uh, minister your goodness, minister your love, your direction, your purpose, uh, the things that you've got for all, for all of us. I want to thank you, Papa, that whatever is in this word that might be overwhelming for a person, I thank you for your portion that you have for them today, that your spirit will release within them um, that will germinate and grow. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I first want to just start off by saying, you know, Papa has been leading us over the last, um, well, for a long time and um, and in this time that he's been leading us it's just it's not like all of a sudden um, this virus or this pandemic has come around and everything that Papa's been saying is now on hold because now we need to focus on this and what is Papa saying in this during this time of this pandemic it's it's actually a, how I would see it is that Papa is is creating a tapestry and um, and, there's, and he's been leading us along a line of truth. And then this is another thread that has come in that is just really, I think, it's there to prick our attention, to highlight that we need to get hold of. Highlight that, hold on, um, in this time when Papa's weaving things together and he's drawing strings and he's creating this tapestry, um, let's try and draw it all together so we can understand the time that we are living in right now because this has arisen so it's almost as though whatever he's been saying to us culminates all in the now and what lies tomorrow so um so it's not like he hasn't been speaking it's, it's i feel like it's a kind of let's draw these threads together and what he's saying and let's see the picture that he's creating for us during seekers uh, day um Papa spoke to, uh, spoke to us out of a scripture, uh, Habakkuk 2.1. Um, and I'm actually going to read it out of the Orthodox Jewish Bible. And it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the rampart and will watch to see what Hashem will speak in me and what he will show um, and, what he, and what answer he will give to my complaint or my inquiry. So I like that translation because it's like I'm setting myself to watch and see what will what will Papa speak in me that will give an answer to my complaint. So first of all, there needs to be something that we're bringing before Papa. There needs to be a, a an inquiry before Papa so that I can set myself to see what answer he's going to release to this petition that I brought before him and he's going to speak that answer in me and it's an answer that I need that I need to understand this is this is God's word regarding the situation so therefore it's covenant it's something that he wants to bring forth fruit from it's something that he wants to cause to grow because anything that God uh, that God says will not return void so therefore whatever he speaks to me is covenant and I can look in the face of, of this condition and say, hey, Papa, in the face of this condition, I'm setting my face towards you. I'm, I'm, I'm setting myself towards you so I can hear what you have to say regarding this condition. What covenant do you have that I can stand and be able to declare those covenants? Brian sent out a, a message um, yesterday from Bill Johnson. From their sermon on Sunday, and they and, and he preached from um, from Psalm ninety one, but towards the end he highlights Matthew seventeen verse nineteen when when the disciples um, try to um, deliver this child from demon possession and nothing happened, and so 
they draw Jesus aside and they inquire privately with Jesus, why couldn't we deliver this boy? Why couldn't, why couldn't the miracles that we used to, why couldn't the things that we've seen happen, happen now? And so they draw Jesus aside and they inquire of him why nothing happened. Now, I think for many of us, it's at this point that we will give up. This is what Bill Johnson's saying. At this point, we give up. We pray, nothing happens. So we stop. We don't do anything about it. But here these disciples, they inquire of Jesus, why didn't anything happen? And um, he, he uses the word, he says, it should bother us enough to look at the abnormality of a breakthrough. So we should be so used to breakthroughs. We, sh we should be so used to God coming through in the miraculous. This is the place that he wants to set us up for, that when, when, when the miraculous is not happening, we need to be alarmed by it. But anyway, we mustn't give up inquiring of the Lord and inquire. Let us take responsibility. Let us not use excuses and say, ah, oh, this is God's sovereignty. This is the will of God. Nothing happened. This is what he wanted. Let's not do anything about it. No, let us take responsibility. Let's inquire of the Lord. And I believe this is what Papa has been speaking to us about all along, uh, um, even just recently from Jeremiah 33, 3, when he says, call to me and I will show you great and unsearchable things that you do not yet know. So there are things, as we said last week, that are hidden, that unless we inquire of Papa, they will remain hidden. And there are things he wants to share with us. There's stuff about his heart. There is, there is an intimacy with, with that Papa has, 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 has kept hidden up, shut up in his heart, that he will only release to those who have really found their place in his heart because they've, they've pushed through to that place. And so we need to set ourselves as watchmen Listen, let's discern, let's understand, let's ask Papa every day, what's my portion? What is my portion, my daily bread, my daily bread of inheritance? What is the portion that you want to release to me today? Where do you want me right now today? In what position do you want me today? And respond. And as I said before, we can respond with, with covenant. As God releases covenant, we can respond with that in the face of the condition that uh, is presented in front of us. One of the things that we did when we went to the South Pole um, was uh, we reset the covenant frequency of the earth. Now that sounds really strange, but Papa has called us to do some really interesting, weird and wonderful stuff. We don't know how it works, but I think, you know, more and more Papa's going to call us up into the throne room where he's going to call us into a place of strategy where we're going to be moving things around. These things are going to be so out there, but we are going to be responding with them. He's going to be allowing us into this whole process and they're going to have world uh, repercussions. And so here we were, there were six of us at the South Pole. Papa called us there and he called us there to a number of assignments. And one of them was the resetting of the frequency of the world. Um, and the, to, so that the earth can can be restored to its right frequency. And, um, and so Papa set, uh, pa you know, Papa set in nature a frequency. He set a, a restoring, healing frequency in nature. So we prayed that um, uh, for the restoration of that. And then just after that, Papa led us to pray for the restoration of Shabbat. And that right across the earth, he will restore Shabbat and the and the holiness of Shabbat right across the earth. Um, I feel like we mustn't underestimate the, the power of our prayers. Don't underestimate when God maybe called two or three people together. And he says, I want you, I want you to pray for this world, world thing, this world event. And you think, who are we? Don't underestimate what Papa wants to do through you because you've stepped into your covenant. You've stepped into your role of authority. Remember, it's, it's, it's him in you. That's all that matters. Um, and so here we are. We step into our covenant authority and God can use us in incredible ways. And we know that in Romans 8, 
it speaks about how nature has been groaning. There's been this longing, this urgency within nature, just this um, expectancy in nature. And it says there's this groaning going on in nature for the sons of God to be revealed, to deliver, to deliver creation from its bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of the children of God. And, um, and so right through the earth, this groaning has been taking place and the manifestation of this groaning has been taking place all around the world. And now I believe that this, this virus is something of the groaning of creation. creation. Creation has been abused. Creation has been in a mess. And so there's this groaning going on um, in creation and, and, um, and, and the earth wants restoration. When there's groaning, God responds with covenant. Let me say that again. Where there's groaning, God responds with covenant. In Exodus 6 verse 5, moreover, I've heard the groaning of the Israelites when the Egyptians are in, um, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I've remembered my covenant. And there's a number of scriptures where it says when there's groaning from his people, he remembers covenant. And when there's a groaning going on, a legitimate groaning going on, God remembers covenant. And so I feel like at this stage, there is this, um, this need for, um, for God uh, to, to stir within us that we start to rise up in our covenant. Amen. And so we know that, you know, um, the frequency, the, the, the natural frequency of 432 is a healing, calming um, restoring balance. Um, it's a uh, it's a peace um, frequency, and um, and in the 1940s at that time, there was this push, this move to change the sound of all instruments. There became the world standard of sound that all uh, uh, the uh, frequency be be changed to 440 which is actually an aggressive, agitated sound. And so all your musical instruments have been refrequenced, if you can use that word, to 440. Papa wants the world restored back to this place of healing and rest. The world, has, the, the world I believe, at this stage has been forced into a place of rest. It's been forced into a place of Sabbath rest. Now, the world doesn't know what's going on, but... There is something of, of a restoration or a shift going on in the world, forcing the world into this place of Sabbath rest. And, and we saw that with God's people is that they had neglected um, Shabbat. They had neglected the Sabbath rest of the land. Um, and so all the years that they had neglected that, they went into the, the, there was a consequence to, to the condition of, of, uh, of their relationship with God. And they suffered the consequence of that, but it was all so that they can be restored back to covenant and restored back to that place of Sabbath. And I feel like that's what's happening, is that there is something of the response of God's heart to restore the earth back to its place of Sabbath rest, and particularly the people of God. Chris sent me a, um, a video link um, on a it's got something to do with the economy of the world and, and, and what it's all in at the moment. But the title of that video says, The Reset Just Happened. And it was written by Gregory. The Reset Just Happened, Gregory. And I felt like Papa's just caught my attention there. He says, Gregory, the, re the reset has just happened. And um, so we are living in a new normal. We are living in a, um, a time of a new playing field. And so... Uh, I think a lot of things are going to change around the world. New standards and everything are going to start happening. Um, and it starts with us. The reset starts with us. When Papa spoke to Joshua 3, in Joshua 3, to, to Joshua, and he says that all through the camp, they need to tell the people that it's a time of consecration because, um, because today I'm going to show you my wonders. And so um, there's this desire for God, uh, for, for his people to cross over into inheritance and to cross over into, um, into our calling and our, and our purpose. Um, but before that takes place, there's this consecration 
and then um, and then the priests go out, the restoration of this priesthood that we believe, and hold back the waters of the Jordan so that every last person can cross over into the inheritance. And that whole thing about consecrate yourself, because today I'm going to do wonders among you. Um, I feel like that whole area of consecration, as we've been exploring it, as you know, we've said in the past, is it deals with our agitation, it deals with aggression, it deals with our stress and fear, the things that, that we care, that care about that have distracted us, the worries of the world, selfish ambitions, soulish pleasures, and those type of things. I feel like they all resolved in rest. I feel like, you know, all these things, these selfishness and all this stuff that rises up in me, when I'm in a place of rest, they don't exist. And so I feel like when Papa says I'm restoring Sabbath rest, he's restoring far more than me just being peaceful. He's, re he's, he's restoring the things that choke the word of God. He's restoring, he's restoring the things that hold back destiny. He's restoring the things uh, that, that he's got planned that, that will produce 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. He's, he's restoring the, the soil. He's restoring the ground. He's restoring the earth back to a place of, of, of being fruitful and ready uh, for when he speaks. And my whole being being restored to covenant frequency that that I don't even have to say anything that who I am when I stand in my covenant in rest it's like Jesus when he was before Pontius Pilate uh, it was like you know what account do you give for all these accusations against you he remained silent he was in perfect rest he didn't have to he didn't have to explain himself he didn't try and justify himself he didn't have to let the world know who he was. He didn't have to let the world know that he was powerful. He didn't have to prove himself in any way. But there he was. He just stood in who he was. He stood in his identity. He stood in who he was and didn't say a word. And I feel like that's the kind of covenant frequency that Papa wants to restore to us. We just have to stand. Stand in who we are. Rest in who we are and be. So I feel like there's, I uh, just want to say as well, is that there's a great shift coming of the glory of God. And that, yes, as the earth turns more dark and, and, and thick darkness covers the people, um, whatever that darkness might look like, whatever it might be, the glory of God is going to come and rise upon his people. Um. And, I, and, and, and the church, you and I, we need to be in a place, we need to be that venue of love. When the glory of God rises, when there's a restoration of the glory of God, we need to become that venue of love. We need to be at the right place for in all those that Papa loves so much, those treasures hidden in dark places can be found and and, and, and restored to a place where they are rescued into a venue of love. Now, we know that God doesn't share his glory with anybody. I feel like we have to be in that bride relationship with Adonai because it's in that relationship, that bride, husband, wife relationship that you share everything, that you are so one with one another, that, that, that you... That everything that is yours is mine and everything that is mine is yours. Is that It's in that marriage relationship with the bride that God will, will, will begin to share his glory. Because it's, 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 on, it's on those people that the glory of God will rise. It's those people who are found in him, who are one with him. You know, we've been looking at Psalm 91 and I, and I, and I feel like Psalm 91 is, is a prophetic word from um, from the time of David, really looking to our generation, our generation who are in Christ, who are starting to understand this greater measure of what does it mean to be in Christ. In Psalm 91, it starts, He who dwells in the shelter the shelter of the Most High, that's El Elyon, he who dwells in the shelter of El Elyon will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Powerful, amazing scripture. Who is this who is abiding in the shadow of the Almighty? 
Who is this who is found in the secret place, in the shadow of the Almighty? It's you and me. It's you and I who are in the shadow of the Almighty. When Jesus went to the cross, when Jesus died, where were you? You were in him. When he was buried, where were you? You were in him. When he was raised from the dead, where were you? You were in him. When he was raised to glory to sit at the right hand of the Father, where were you? You were in him. You were in Christ Jesus all along. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Prince. Um, anyway, Prince. He, he says, Joseph Prince. He says um, that Jesus didn't die for his own sins. He died for your sins. It was you on the cross. It was you hanging there. It was your sin hanging there. When, 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 you, when Jesus died, it was you who died. When, when Jesus was buried, it was you who, who was buried. When Jesus rose from the dead, it was you who rose from the dead. It was you who was set free. It was you where sin was broken over your life, mine and your life. It was our lives that the sin was broken off when Jesus went to the cross because he went to the cross with mine and your sin. Amen. So when he rose to glory to be seated at the right hand of God, where are you seated? In Christ, at the right hand of, the God, of, of God the Father. Under, there with Papa, under the shadow of the Almighty, in this incredible place. Where are we? Under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay, all powerful, Almighty. Um, you think of the sh of the disciples. I think they kind of had a grasp, something of um, something of the bigness of of all of this, of this truth, of this revelation, because. You know, as it speaks of how the disciples would walk and just their shadow would fall on the sick or those sitting in the way and they would be healed. Every one of them, they were healed as, the sh as, 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 as their shadow fell on them. It was these disciples walking under the shadow of the Almighty. There was such an authority when you, when you know who you are, when you know where you are seated, when you know whose counsel you are under. It is the Papa's shadow that was over them. It was the shadow of Papa when they walked that fell on the sick and they were restored. It was the frequency of heaven where all is well, the frequency of heaven, where there is no sickness, the frequency of heaven, of what is in heaven being made, made known here on earth. Amen. And so it was something of a heavenly place that sh being under the shadow of the Almighty, that when they walked the streets, they, they were still under the shadow of the Almighty in the natural there and then, carrying with them the power and the might of heaven. That's for you and me. Amen. There's no fear under the shadow. There's no fear. It's such a place of love. It's such a place of intimacy. It's knowing Papa's heart. It's being there, leaning on, on his chest, just hearing his heartbeat, knowing the voice, recognizing his voice, that this is him. It's such a place of perfect love. And what happens in perfect love? Perfect love cast out all fear. So right here in this place where maybe when you're confined, right here in your home where you have to stay and you're not allowed out, or you, you um, should not go out, <laughs> is, is just to right here allow shalom to be restored within you. Enter into that Sabbath rest. Enter into that place where where, the, where it is the completion of the work of Christ. Enter into that place. Allow um, God just to restore your, your place of shalom inside of you. Meditate on his love in this place when you're at home and in, in, in just your time with Papa. Meditate on his love and how much he loves you. When Jesus says in, in John 15, 9, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. Just meditate on that. As the Father has loved me. Just think of it for a moment. As the Father loved Jesus. How much did the Father love Jesus? Just explore that. Let your mind just go for quite a while. Just how much did Papa love the Son? So he loved you. In the same way as he loved the Son. 
so he loves me just meditate that let that just fill every aspect of you just come into a place of rest just oh my gosh that love the love that he had for Jesus the love that he has for Jesus that is the love he has for me right now and just make that personal interact with him in that moment because perfect love casts out all fear when you're feeling fearful where do you need to go back to perfect love Papa's turning you into a house and he's been speaking to us about house. He's been speaking about home. That church needs to return to home. It actually is church needs to return to a place that looks like home. You need to return to a place that is home. Yes, Papa lives on the inside of us. Yes, the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. Yes, we are the, the vessels of this great glory on the inside of us. But he wants you to look like home. He actually wants you to sound like home. And, and, and what, is, what is the house of God? The house of God is a house of prayer for all nations. He wants to use you as a house of prayer for all nations. What is his tabernacle? His tabernacle is a tabernacle of praise. His tabernacle of worship. That's what he's building you into. A house of prayer for all the nations. A tabernacle of worship and prayer and, of, and praise. He's turning you into a venue of love. Were you, were you not just housing his love, where you are transformed by his love, you love by his love, you expanded, your heart is expanded so that you start to look and act and sound and do what the Father would do. Amen. So when you are established at home, I believe that you will, you will start releasing a frequency. <laughs> it's almost like there's a beacon You'll start releasing a beacon. When you start to look like home and when, you, when God starts to establish home in you, you're going to release a homing beacon. And that homing beacon, I believe, will become louder as we gather together. As a church, I believe, will become a homing beacon. As the people of God, I believe, will become a homing beacon. As we gather together, standing in our covenant and our frequency and the work that Papa has done on the inside of us, and we just release this frequency... It's a home calling. And that's what happened. That's something I believe that the prodigal heard when he came to his senses. I need to return home. But there was something about the prodigal that needed to resolve something in his heart that he might, must have been wrestling with. How do I return to a place uh, when, I, when, when I've been so bad? How do I go back when, I, when I've sinned so deeply, when my life is in such a mess, in such a state? We don't know what he did, what he got up to, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he did. That's not the issue and that's not even the focus. The focus is that he resolves within him, he wrestles within him, I'm going to return home. But he doesn't know what he's going to find when he goes home. He doesn't know, am I, am, I gonna, am I gonna be rejected? There's this big fear of rejection. Listen, at the moment, the church represents home for many people, and many people aren't gonna go to the church. Many people aren't gonna look to the church as home. Many people know that the church is probably the greatest place of judgment. It's the place where I'm gonna be rejected the most. It's a people who are gonna look at me and they're gonna judge me. It is a people that are going to say that I need to fix up my act. It's a people who's going to say, hey, you better change. It's, it's, it's a people that says, before you come in, yeah, you need, to, you need to look like this or you need to look like that. And so there is, there is a duality that needs to start taking place here. There's a, we need to start praying for a boldness to rise up on, 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 the, on the prodigals, those who are out there that are just looking for a homing beacon that are looking for a place to return to, a place of rescue for, for where they are at because they've, they've lost everything. So we need to be praying for that boldness to be able to turn towards that homing beacon. But we also need to be praying for the state of the church, that the state of the church, that the heart of the church will be a place of celebration. It'll be a place of such extravagance. It says, this one was lost, but he is now found. And, and there's a celebration. There is nothing. There is no hint of judgment, no hint of legalism or anything like that. It is a place of celebration. 
It's a place that will say, hey, let's just get extravagant over this one who has been found, this one who's returned home. Let's get extravagant. And I don't believe that Papa was judging the, the older son in the least. When you read the story of the older son, it's a, hey, but, but you, never, you, know, you never once um, killed a, a, a calf for my friends. The heart of Papa then turns towards the son and says, but don't you know, and because this son has served him so diligent, don't you know all that I have is yours? And there's something of that. There's something of the, of the, of the reward of those who have just so diligently, uh, their heart has been around the church. Their heart has been for the church. Their life has been for the church. Papa wants to say, hey, I've seen your commitment. Hey, I've seen how you have remained faithful to home. I've seen how you re have remained faithful to my cause and my purpose and, and my heart. And, 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 and so my answer to you is here. Share in everything I have. And there's something that he, that I feel like there, there's almost a graduation for the older son, not a condemnation. There's a graduation for the older son. Is hey, hey, you going from sonship to a place of a far more authority. You going to a place where I can I can trust you with everything I have. Don't you know it's all yours? He says, I say, we need to be praying for both sides that the church starts to turn. The church starts to become a place of celebration. It needs to become this homing beacon um, that Papa has intended it to be. And, and I was just reminded, you know, just long before this virus happened is, you know, people just even in our congregation, in, amongst us, we, we were just, you know, parents were returning home. People were hosting their parents. People were saying, oh, uh, you know, my, my mother's moved in now or, or the children have moved in now. And, and so children started returning home and, 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 and this, this weird shift started taking place of, of family returning to a home. And, and I feel like this is, you know, we can look at it and say, wow, my house has been disrupted. Our lives have been disrupted. It's like, all this mess, uh, this, it's just, it's, it's a mayhem. But I feel like, you know what? It's messy, but it's God. I feel like we have to look at this and say, you know, when, 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 when those people start to return with all their, with all their stuff, and they start to return with all their, their mess, it is going to be messy. But I need to be in a, in, in, my heart needs to be a place in a place of celebration. And you say, oh, they're returning home. Let's celebrate. You see, we grew, we grew up, and, and for many of us, our children went through this uh, growing up phase in the church of legalism and, and just so many rules and stuff like that until we started to understand God's grace. I feel like, you know, we've just been given a second chance of just saying, hey, our children are all home or our children have come home. Let's, let's show them what grace looks like. Let's not get upset about the mess. Let's not get all upset about how, how disruptive all of this is. This is a new, a, a second chance. This is another opportunity of grace and of just showing grace. And, and uh, Dina had a dream that she shared during Seek His Face on Wednesday. And she said, in the dream, there was a fruit tree that was on the pavement outside of her house. And it was a large fruit tree. And on the fruit tree was these massive fruit, huge fruit, but they're falling to the ground. And she says, I saw the fruit were ripe and they were messy, but um, I didn't want to go out and collect or, or ripe and falling to the ground, but I didn't want to go out to collect them because it was messy. And I feel like this is just, you know, this is Papa just saying, hey, this is, this is not going to look like you want it to look like. When you become a homing beacon, it's like you become that place of rescue. You become that place where you know, when you pick up a diamond, it doesn't look anything like a diamond. It's actually got no shine, no glimmer, no, no reflection at all. It's it, like a normal old um, opaque stone. Um, and so, you know, that's treasures hidden in darkness. And when, when Papa brings them, it's like he's, he's, 
He's bringing him. He's trusting them in our care. He's trusting them in this venue of love so that Papa can do something. So this is, this is just, it's, it's, you know, come on, let's, let's understand this is a reset. This is a reset for us. I feel like it's a reset for the church. It's a reset for us to get our act, our act right, get positioned, get ready, get excited about what Papa's going to do because he's going to be revealing his glory. He's going to be releasing a sound from you. He's going to be releasing a sound from us that's going to be a homing beacon. And I want that. And I don't want to miss it. And I feel just in closing, what we need to be doing in this time is saying, okay, Papa, what is our portion? And I know our portion at this time is to pray. And let's be praying for our neighbors. Let's be praying for those around us um, in our villages, in our towns, just the people across the road. Let's be praying. Papa, be working in their heart in this time of Shabbat. Be, be drawing them to a place of, of not a false rest, but drawing them to a place with you drawing them where you will reveal yourself. I pray, Papa, that um, that even in this time, let's be praying that he, would be, that he would send out his angels, that he would send out um, those, those uh, ministers of fire that will, that, will, that will be ministering salvation, even when we can't be there, that his spirit will be moving in, in the homes around us. Let's be praying. The power of our prayer, of, of, of the, our, our prayers are powerful and effective and mighty, to pulling down our strongholds and even when we're praying let's you know papa bring somebody on your mind somebody in the congregation um whoever whoever it might be ask papa what is it that you want to say to this person how, how do you want to use me to encourage them um you know get icu words for one another if the holy spirit's laying something in your heart and release that to people and then also this is your reset this is your reset into rest Take this opportunity. Don't uh, uh, lay down your sovereignty and take up his sovereignty. Lay down and, and become surrendered and say, Papa, I don't want to clutter my, my life up again here at home um, with just unnecessary stuff. I, I want to spend this time with you. I want you to reset me to a place of rest. Yeah, I'm going to finish there and say, Papa, just want to thank you for us as a congregation i want to thank you papa for what you've been saying to us for such a long time that it's not um it's not now that only that you've been saying this but papa that it's been it's been a it's been a process in which you've been speaking to us and so papa i just want to thank you that you are preparing us i want to thank you that you are doing a work on the inside of us and you're restoring you're restoring us and so it's not like we're not ready we are ready, Papa. We are ready for you to do a work in us. We are ready for you to reset us to a place of rest. Let us, let us become home. Let us become a homing beacon and walk and stand in our covenant. In Jesus' name, amen.